share the love of Jesus. There are two ways according to scripture that we share the love of Jesus. One, by the preaching of the gospel. Number two, by giving. Please write it down. The two ways that we preach the gospel or that we share the love of Jesus in preaching and in giving. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. It says therein is the glove of God revealed in preaching. When you preach and when you give, you give people an opportunity to know Jesus. Please look up. Every believer in Christ is first a child of God, but number two is an ambassador of the kingdom. Are we together? And as kingdom ambassadors, we have a responsibility to see to it that the kingdom that we so lovingly represent is known to all men, especially the king of that kingdom. Don't allow the year to waste without someone knowing Jesus in and through your life. Don't allow the year waste without someone finding Jesus. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you in giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Say giving. Some of you like preaching. The preaching part, you were smiling. You had giving. The apostle don't say it. I will say it. <laughs> Preaching and giving. What do you give? Everything that can make people's lives better. Advice. You know, this world's goods like the Bible says. Let me challenge you. Organize a small welfare for someone in your little community. There are people within your community. Some of them, some of these people, they don't even know where they will get a meal from. If you can buy one bag of rice, 60,000, or how I think I'm right, whatever amount it is, you put it in small bags, you meet them and tell them, Well, I'm here to share the love of Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Or you can buy something for the children. You can set two days to do a Bible study program for children just to help them know the Lord. You don't need to have the name of any ministry. Are we together now? Yes. Or you can decide to just take a hundred thousand, send ten, ten thousand to ten strategic families that you know love the Lord and may not have capacity to, and just tell them with love from Jesus. What a beautiful way to share the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Make sure that you share the love of Jesus with someone, share it with children, share it with your family members, share it with friends share it with all kinds of people let them know that you are a christian let them know you are a child of god don't watch people go to hell and say i don't care i will mind my own business if they reject your proposal about jesus that's fine at least give them a chance that should be true for children some of you may send some welfare material perhaps to a school somewhere and just tell them this is with love this is just to show you that i love you Everything we do for Jesus, I want you to know that it will be rewarded in this life and in the life to come. Do you believe that? Yes. Some of you may want to decide to bless maybe the security people in your office. You just make up your mind that I will give all these people, I will buy one bag of rice and divide it and just call all of them. Don't just give people, say take, take. No, it's not about giving. It's about helping them to feel the love. Say something before you give. Are we together? Yes. Let it not just be about money or bags of rice or groceries or whatever it is. No. Tell them something about Jesus. And that includes non-Christians. I hope you know, you, you know that. That includes non-Christians. Go and gather some children. Doesn't matter what faith, what religion. Share the love of Jesus with them. Help them. Perhaps your company can decide as a seed to take a day and give a 50% discount on whatever it is that you do and boldly tell them I'm doing this as a love seed from Jesus. Amazing. Do it. Sometimes it's not always about giving money. You can also ease the burden for someone. Are we together now? I love you forever. I love you forever. 
I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. One more time. I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Hallelujah. Someone must know Jesus because you were born. Someone must know Jesus. Utilize this time. Don't let the year end without bringing one soul to Jesus. It's a lie if you tell me there's nobody to be saved. I don't believe you. Everybody that is unsaved, according to scripture, is called a harvest. It's already a harvest. And I've taught you here, in God's mind, the problem that God has is not the harvest, it's the laborers. The harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. Some of you show kindness but preach directly to someone for God's sake. Sit with someone and start talking to him about his life. I just want to share a few thoughts with you about life and destiny. Do you mind? And the person says, all right, that's why. And you talk to the person. Let me tell you, today you see me as a great man, but let me tell you a little story. It was not always like this. Don't just walk to people and say, who are you? You are going to hell. No, don't. Do I mean, come on. You, you are given creativity. Don't harass people. They will take you to court. Yes, sir. We live in a time where people are very right conscious. Don't go and put yourself in trouble. No, there are, are very loving ways of introducing conversations that, you know, culminate in salvation. Tell them about your life. You feel inspired by my life. Let me tell you a little story. It wasn't always like this. I came from perhaps a dysfunctional family. You can use your pain. Every man's pain is his point of contact. Are we together? You go and you see a bereaved family, for instance, that's an opportunity to preach Jesus. Let them know that the Bible says there is hope beyond the grave. You start from there. At the end of it, you, you do a proper altar call. Don't be embarrassed whether anybody would say yes to Jesus. Or, I mean, so what? If nobody lifts their hands, that's fine. You planted that seed already. And sometimes there might be someone there needing salvation, but he will refuse. But that seed, have you ever preached to someone who got born again one year later without any other person preaching? It was that seed. It's called the incorruptible seed of the word. You just plant it and leave it there and watch what the Holy Spirit does. That person will not sleep day and night. What is this vision I'm seeing? Seeing myself in a crusade ground. I've always hated this church thing. I've always, don't worry, just leave them and God. You do your own preaching and walk away. If it is this God that we serve, one day you will see that person who will call you and say, where are you? Um, I usually don't do this, so you say, no problem, I'm listening. Uh, I still want you to tell me a little more about this, your Jesus thing. This your church thing. No problem, you gladly say it. And you want to preach the gospel, you take away your ego. It will sting your ego. People will demean you on account of the gospel. Accept it with joy. This is the price it takes to love Jesus and to see the nations know him. Some of you may need to preach to your children. They are not saved. Gather them together and say, my dear children, let me talk to you about Jesus. The Jesus that made your father who he is today. Story, story. Then they say story. And you tell them, once upon a time, I was an idol worshiper. Once upon a time, there were incisions in our bodies on account of the gods that our fathers served. But then some missionaries came from America. Make it interesting. At the end of that conversation, you watch them cry. Because the Spirit of God, there used to be this placard we had in our home back in Joss. It says, Christ is the head of this home. The unseen guest at every meal the silent listener to every conversation very beautiful one more time christ is the head of this home it says then it says he's the unseen guest at every meal then he said he's the silent listener to every conversation including that conversation you are having with your children 
the spirit of the living God is there representing the presence of Jesus bringing about conviction and while you are speaking your stubborn child for the first time under the influence of the convicting power of the spirit if you don't talk to them about Jesus because you are looking at their face they will never be saved this is an inner walk their face can look very hardened but just trust the spirit of God I've been in this business of soul winning for a while and I can tell you there are times you preach on a crusade ground and the people are looking at you as if just finish and go and sleep but you trust the Lord the moment you make that altar call you will see sometimes some unlikely people high profile people coming to Jesus so while they were listening to you with their faces supposedly hardened the Holy Spirit beyond that veil of their face doing a work within their spirit hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so let me recap and then we'll go to one more discussion and then we'll pray my prophetic instructions to you again number one give yourself continually to the word and prayer all through this time number two invest in maintaining your health invest in being healthy go for a medical checkup learn all you can about the principles that make for healthy living especially for those who double as believers and medical practitioners i think they stand on a platform that gives a very a very intelligent view on how to live healthy and then number three make sure you invest in your current relationships and invest in building other superior relationships sustain the courage to edit on profitable relationships you don't have to hurt them but anybody who is not pro destiny pro kingdom pro spirituality pro righteousness you may need to lovingly draw the line and then rearrange your relationships everybody cannot occupy the same space in your heart number four go for an end of year retreat a time alone with god giving thanks a time alone with god appraising the year honestly and truthfully a time where you plan and make quality resolutions and then of course you obtain the doing grace empowerment in all its ramifications now i want you to pray in one minute and then i want to teach you something profound about sacrifice and then we'll take our end of year sacrifice and i speak over your life we we'll have to do this very fast go ahead and pray now that you know this thing up it says happy are you if you do them please pray these are instructions receive grace from god go ahead someone is praying Go ahead and pray. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. The Holy Ghost power rest on me. Let your grace, this grace called favor, rest on me. Rest on me. Let your grace, this grace rest on me. Your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Oh.
want you to listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Many years ago, 